Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Beautiful. Right now, we're uncovering a hidden gem for foodies. Takes it and just helps to bring it together. Now that's a salad. Hi everybody, I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harnett. And if you like chef-driven food, you're gonna love what we have in store for you today on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. You are revealing the secret. It's a restaurant whose guest list includes many of Kentucky's top chefs. You'll see what draws them in and the secrets to making this same incredible food yourself. And that really helps to play with those beans. And Kevin, if you like Bellinis, you'll love this one. I'm sharing the secrets to my better Bellini. All that and more right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. Hello everyone. Thank you again for joining us for an exciting edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs in front of this live studio audience. <laughs> and Tim, they're in for a treat. So are the folks at home and so are we. We've got the head chef from one of the hottest restaurants in Louisville with us. Andrew McCabe is joining us from Barvetti, a casual spot in downtown Louisville that serves chef-driven food. Most of it's Italian-influenced, and all of it comes with Chef Andrew's unmistakable flair. Today, he's going to show us how to make ricotta from scratch. It's something you can do at home when you learn the secrets. And we're going to use the ricotta to make a colorful salad and a very peppery pasta. My question to you is, anybody hungry yet? Yeah. They're All hungry. right. You hungry? I'm hungry, Kevin, so let's get cooking. Let's All do right. it. All right. Here he is from Barvetti, Chef Andrew McCabe. All right, Hello, Chef. <laughs> How's it going? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for being yeah. here. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for me. this is exciting. I'll tell you what, uh, you're getting all kinds of write ups as you should, and everybody's talking about, uh, and you call it Vetti, right? I know it's Bar Vetti, but you like to call yeah. it Vetti for Usually, short. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, Bar Vetti, you're located downtown Louisville. Uh, tell us a little bit about the restaurant and your menu. Right, right. So we, uh, we try to think about uh, Bar Vetti as an Italian, sorry, a regional Italian restaurant. But the region we're in is Kentucky, so we uh, use a lot of products from Kentucky. That is great. Um, so instead of importing prosciutto, we're using country ham. Um, instead of using polenta, we're using grits, those kind of things. And then just taking a really good product and presenting it simply, and then going from there. And that's great. I'll tell you what, we're so lucky to have you here, and uh, I know you do a lot of things. Yeah, and give us, as we walk through the restaurant and, and some of the items on the menu, we're going to see some of that prepared before ours, but give us a little bit of history on yourself, kind of where you started, where you came from, how you got here. Right, right. I uh, grew up in Madison, Indiana, about an hour yeah. away. I moved here after high school, um, went to Sullivan University, uh, spent about six years here. I was actually at Laurel A the whole time, um, did pastry mostly there. And then moved to Chicago for two years, worked in some really amazing places there. Uh, one place, L2O, uh, got three Michelin stars. Oh, uh, yeah. And then Blackbird, um, Great very place. famous restaurant that's sure. been around oh, for yeah. 20 plus years now. So, really awesome places. Moved back to help open Harvest. Um, just wanted to get back to Louisville. Well, uh, and it really is a, just an awesome culinary city, as you know. It is, it is. And it's like one of the nice things about Louisville, too, is local farms are truly local like you can get in the car from the restaurant and 20 minutes here at a farm you know um, whereas some larger cities it's like three or four hours so. and we have such a diverse of uh, uh, Kentucky proud items you can you can get too. I love that about right. uh, Kentucky so wonderful uh, tell us what we're doing today <clears throat> all right so we're doing uh, two dishes um, one is on the menu currently Barbetti one might be on uh, sometime and a little sneak peek, <laughs> some sort of sneak peek everybody <laughs> <laughs> all right so the first dish we'll be doing is uh, the rigatoni cacio e pepe. So cacio e pepe is a pretty traditional Italian dish. Uh, we use rigatoni. Um, I kind of like it because it's a bigger shape. I think normally, uh, traditionally, it's usually a bucatini or something a like that. Or... Um, I think the rigatoni is kind of fun because it kind of feels a little bit more like uh, maybe macaroni. And it's kind of uh, adult macaroni and cheese almost. <laughs> uh, so cacio e pepe means uh, cheese and pepper. So it is pecorino, pecorino cheese, it's a sheep's milk, hard cheese, um, super delicious. It's got a nice uh, sharpness to it, a little acidic tang. Uh, and then really from there, it's cheese, butter, and black pepper. Oh my oh, gosh. That's a this nice is, combination. I'll tell yeah. you why I, I might get in the that. pan first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, where do we start, Chef? So first things first, we're going to drop the pasta in the water. 
And see, I like that pasta because all those rings around there, that's going to soak up all the uh, sauce. Exactly. exactly. So one really important step here. We've already toasted the black pepper before we put it in the pepper mill. That just helps to wake it up. That's a great secret. All mm. of a sudden, you're putting the pepper in there to, to bring out the oils and a little bit exactly. more of that uh, nuttiness of the pepper. That's a great idea. I've never seen that technique done before. This wake is... it up. Wake it up. <laughs> I like that. Wake it up. So many way puns. <laughs> I didn't even mean it like that. <laughs> We're basically toasting the black pepper a second time. Uh, again, just to wake it up. It really makes a huge difference in. And this is just water. Pasta. Just this straight pasta water. strainer. So you can start to smell the pepper. I can. All those oils are coming off. It really gives it a real peppery note. I love that. I'm a big fan of pepper too. I Some am too. people get a little cranky about pepper. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much pepper. Do we have any of those cranky pepper people in the audience? Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> see. He admitted it. I, I get it. And there goes the way. So there's the way. Explain what that is again. So that's the byproduct of making cheese. So okay. you've got the so curds, it's just the, the curds in the way. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. And as you can see right here. I remember it from a nursery rhyme. I think. <laughs> exactly. Right? You can see it starting to separate. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Okay. So that's the cheese, and then what's left over under there is all the way. Exactly, yeah. And you're saving it, you're reusing it. Exactly. So I'm gonna give the pasta a taste. It smells good. So already all of our pastas are fresh. We actually have a pasta extruder, so a lot of shapes you don't normally see fresh, uh, like rigatoni, um, we make every day. I made this Excellent. pasta yesterday. Nice. Perfect. So it's pretty amazing the difference it does with the texture and flavor, and also the cook time, because as you can see, this is already done. Yeah, fresh pasta, it it's cooks quickly. <clears throat> I was hoping he was going to make you a little bit, Tim, but I'm, <laughs> I can see. I'm afraid that that's I'm, not happening today. However, I'm closer to it, Kevin. <laughs> I might beat you to it. <laughs> that's why I stay right here. I don't know if you know, but well, I thought that was a knife. It's not <laughs> a knife. So, a really important note: always use a little bit of your pasta water in the pasta because that starch in there the helps starch. Yep. thicken things up a little bit too. Takes it and just helps it bring it together. So we're just working that pasta with that way to start the sauce. And then over here, I've got what's actually just a little compound butter. So it's butter and pecorino. Probably if you've got like a dinner party or something like that, you can make something like this ahead of time. And that way, you know you've got the right amount of butter, you've got the right amount of uh, cheese. Cheese mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. And when you're putting it together for your guests, you're not like worrying about it and tasting it over and over again. It's just ready to go. Good idea. Also, that'd be good just right on bread and everything else, right? Right. Because you exactly. got the butter and the cheese together, right? Many uses, not just for this. Or a steak. Pretty or a steak. Pretty Ooh. much don't even need the pasta. Just eat the butter. <laughs> just eat the butter. That's <laughs> so, right. The butter just goes in. Oh, that looks delicious. I know. Look at that, no need for a spoon. Do you see yeah, that? Yeah, right. Do you see that? I, I stir the same the way. Stirring, at home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you stir that way, the pasta would be all over here, there, on the floor. It'd be like Gallagher. Yeah. Yeah, good thing you're not stirring. Our front row would uh, not need, appreciate need it. Need ponchos. Yeah. So, again, this right. is very simple. Pasta's on the plate. Oh, nice. And then. Is this how it's served at the restaurant? Exactly how it's served. Yeah. Just finish with a little more pecorino. Oh. And a touch more black pepper. Absolutely. Perfecto. That's I think it. that's right. Is that yeah. Italian? And now front. <laughs> <laughs> that that looks great. I'll tell you what, Chef. Awesome. Thank you. And that is on the menu all the time. On the menu all the time. Yeah. So. If you want to go in, I think rather than doing this uh, by hand at home, the secret is go down and see uh, Chef at uh, Bar Vetti. We're not finished cooking though. We've got more to come in the next segment. What are you going to make? Uh, we've got we got to finish the ricotta. Okay. And then we're going to uh, make a little beet salad with it. Beautiful. That All right. Good. And Tim, you're mixing up a cocktail. I'm mixing up a fun cocktail too. A better Bellini. Oh, a better Bellini. You better believe it. We've got it coming <laughs> up on Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. Yeah. 
Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Nothing else is close. With support from the Kentucky Beef Council. In Kentucky, beef is still what's for dinner. And by PNC Bank. For the achiever in you. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Hope you're enjoying the show with Chef Andrew McCabe. We are learning the secrets from Barvetti. He showed us how to make ricotta at home and put it to use with pasta. And coming up, he has another way you can use it. Wait until you see this. But it's time to head back to the bar. What do you say we go back to the old Forester bar with my buddy Tim Laird, who's mixing up a cocktail? Tim? I love Bellinis, but this is a better Bellini. You better believe it. And here's what's in it. All you're going to need is five ounces of Corbel Brut Champagne, half ounce peach schnapps, and one ounce peach nectar. And here's how you make it. In my uh, stir glass with ice, in goes my peach nectar, a little bit of that peach schnapps to really give it a nice peachy flavor. And I want to get this well chilled. Some good stirs on that one. I'm going to strain that into a white wine glass. There's our base. And now we're going to top it off with Corbel Brut Champagne. Oh, refreshing, delicious, and peachy keen because I'm going to garnish it with a grilled peach slice. Boom, there it is. The better Bellini. Cheers. All right, Tim. By the sounds of the audience, they approve of that better Bellini. We've got more cooking coming up. Andrew McCabe still with us here in Kitchen Studio. We will get back to the cooking when we come back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Kevin Harned, Tim Laird, Andrew McCabe from Barbetti, and a studio audience that is hungry. They're hungry, hungry, hungry. <laughs> and so are we. We are, too. And I'll tell you what, so basically the ricotta is ready to go, but That's we're right. going to strain it first. Is that uh, the next step, Chef? That's right. All so right. we've just got a... Uh, Strainer lined with a little bit of cheesecloth. Cheesecloth. So right. the cheese cheesecloth is going to catch the curds, and Got then it. the whey is going to strain out. Go now on. we've sort of been doing this in stages. How long would it take at home to, to complete this process? Right. So this just came up. You can see it right here. The curds are just starting to form on top. Mm -hmm. So that takes about 15 minutes or so okay. for so it about to come long. up to about 190 degrees. And then you let it sit for about 30 minutes, and that's where we're at right so here. This is that sitting stage. In right. The 30 and that just minutes. helps. Really, and you can see how creamy together. and exactly, yeah. So that's going to go into the cheesecloth strainer. So just pour it slowly. Look at that here, so you can see it. You know, the other thing you were talking about using that whey, um, it's very rich too. It still has a lot of flavor and right. And uh, we've actually used whey in uh, cocktails before as well. No. Mm -hmm. Have you, wow. Tim? No, I've got, I'm learning the secrets. I want to I want to find out about that. We can play around later on. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I brought my shaker. <laughs> it's like in his holster on his yeah. side. Like, hey, I got one. Yeah. We're going anywhere without it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can see the curds. Oh yeah, right there. Definitely. Waste so we're just going right to let there. that uh, drain for a little bit. In the meantime. Uh, you've got a lunch program at uh, Vetti too. Right, right. We're doing lunch uh, Wednesday through Saturday, 11 to 2. Um, it's a little bit different than our dinner menu. There's a few more sandwich options. We've got a really awesome uh, smashed meatball mm. sandwich. Uh, and then we've got uh, we've got a baked rigatoni. Ooh, baked uh, rigatoni. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, uh, it's, it's perfect for this weather. Yes. It's a uh, red sauce, anytime. mozzarella, a little bit of basil, breadcrumbs. Beautiful. Delicious. So yeah, and I then love uh, it. dinner. We do uh, Monday through Thursday, 5 to 10. Oh, my gosh. And then uh, 5 to 11 on Friday and Saturday. Oh, beautiful. That sounds great. What are the other ingredients we're going to have in this uh, next dish? You always talk about being Kentucky proud, so I right. see we've got some beets. The we've got beets, pistachios, and then uh, cheese. So Perfect. It's uh, a little bit of mint as well. 
Perfect. And, and you know what? That's what's great about Italian cooking, too. It's it's very simplified. Just a right. few ingredients that has great flavors that come together, and it's delicious. And, and, and again, I can't stress how much it's great to have you here cooking Italian, but Kentucky proud, how right. how you brought that into uh, the fold of what you're doing. And, and like you said, you know the farmers, you know where you're getting everything, so... Yeah, that is wonderful. It it might be simple, but it seems so <clears throat> thoughtful. Like I mean, I think right. everything in the Italian world is just thought out about how it's going to really pair together. And that's kind of um, with the beets. That's one of the things there. Um, the way it's cooked, the way it's taken care of. Um, I actually like to poach my beets. Okay. Um, a little bit different. I I'd never seen this before until uh, I worked with LeBron Wallace at Proof back in the day. And he always liked doing this. So. You actually take the beets, put them in a liquid with a lot of salt, sugar, and some type of vinegar. And you don't want it salty, you don't want it sweet, you don't want it acidic, you want it all just balanced. balanced. <clears throat> and then it's just poached in that liquid and cooled in that liquid. And that really helps to flavor those beets. Oh, nice. And then we're taking it a second step, and we've just got some citrus, we've got some oranges, grapefruit, a touch of lemon, a little bit of uh, some really nice olive oil. and. Uh, what a great That's way to it. cook the beets, though. You are revealing the secrets. You, you do yeah. know the premise of the show, so there it is. The secrets to the beets in that poaching liquid. It's just wonderful. Beat. Yep, and the beet goes on, Kevin. <laughs> I'm glad I could provide so many puns. I know. <laughs> I know. It's just, we try every Never. time to turn this thing into a comedy show. Yeah. Clearly, it's not working. <clears throat> All right, so we're ready to plate ready. this up. Yes, yeah, so again, just very simple. This beautiful, fresh cheese we just made. Yes. God, look how beautiful, creamy. And a great texture. Right. Oh, that's amazing. I know, isn't it though? And you saw it right before your very <laughs> that's eyes. That's the amazing part. It's like magic, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Have yeah. you guys ever seen that? Have you made any cheese? Anybody yeah, made? It seems so easy. We're all going to have a ricotta class afterwards. <laughs> it's be a party. <laughs> it will be a, we're going to have a ricotta party. And there's those beautiful beets. And look at the color on that. They're gorgeous. It's that creamy white. Beautiful I, red. I'm a huge fan of beets too. I am this too. This is my kind of deal right here. We've got mac and cheese and beets, <laughs> kind of in a certain way. So then just a little pistachio. Give it a little crunch. A little crunch. A little nuttiness. Just a touch of mint for some uh, nice freshness. Beautiful. And that, and just a little bit is all you need, and it just gives it that nice, like exactly, you said, exactly. freshness, a little minty. Especially with that cheese, kind of that creaminess. Just a nice little bit of crunchy finishing salt. Beautiful. Salt. There now you have it. That's a salad. Wow. <laughs> and this side we can get at the restaurant anytime? Or uh, uh, it might be on the menu soon. Oh. We'll see what happens. This is like a sneak peek. So <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, by the time this airs, it might be available. We'll yeah. see. Anyway, <laughs> you got to come down and see and check it out. Tell us exactly where you're located, uh, we're, Chef. Yeah, we're located at uh, 800 South 4th Street in the base of the 800 Towers. Uh, just right off of Broadway. Oh, and we're so glad you brought all that cooking skills from all over the country and, and especially Chicago where you're talking about some of those great restaurants and from here and you're staying with us, aren't you? You're not going to leave Louisville. No. Okay. I'm here. This is it. <laughs> Promise. You're on, now you, see, the, now you said that on the camera. We got you on camera. Do we have to bring you back? <laughs> so anyway, perfect. perfect. Chef Andrew McCabe, the chef chef as we call it. <laughs> Thank you for hey, being here. So we appreciate it so Thanks, much. Thank you. It was great. Oh, my gosh. We're glad you all are here. You're going to have a chance to take a taste. If you're looking for tickets to our show, you can find them at mintjuleptours.com. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harned. We'll see you next time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. That was so incredible. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Nothing else is close. With support from the Kentucky Beef Council. In Kentucky, beef is still what's for dinner. And by PNC Bank. For the achiever in you.